Good morning, Rab Boisai. Ah, Lilu Nishma Simi Meros Rusos Portachai. Very nice email written in Hebrew from a Rebbe in a cheder, a very famous cheder here, right next door. Shalom Aleichem Rebelli. Ah, my name is Yaakov Waldman. I'm a Rebbe in Avi Ezri. I listened to your shir already for a few weeks and I love it. It's very gishmak. I live in Beitar, so I'm not going to be able to come live. And also on Zoom, I have a different thing. But I want that my Talmidim should get a gishmak from you. So now that the learning of the Metzius, I want to send these tzaddikim from the fifth grade. Those who live in the neighborhood. And da da da. So, Yeshakoyach. And then on the bottom, uh, one second, a small little thing. Could they please get free Gemaras for coming? <laughs> Anyways, they showed up yesterday, a bunch of them, maybe 10 of them. It was beautiful. So it's good to know that uh, Israeli Rabbeim are watching this year in Hebrew. It's Givaldic. So yesterday, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Let's see. No. Ma'azin <laughs> v'tzofeh let's zoom in right over there animazin v'tzoyfe bashiur anyway the voice says yesterday we had two kickoff events for kickoff was very very nice we had I don't know 30-40 people here in the base medrash for the total people took upon themselves $85,000 I think we could do much better we had a goal of 150. I think we could do better. I think people are a little weary. I thought about it myself. Like if they asked me to, to put a page, maybe I would also hesitate. But at the end of the day, it's very low level pressure. You're not knocking on people's doors. You're, not, you're putting it on your status. You're sending people WhatsApps. People are used to it. They get these all day long. It's not, it's not your, you're not going out of your comfort zone that much. Well, you could go out of your comfort zone if you want. And let me tell you what happened there. So... Yaakov Sitra, $1,000. Shamshi Shlafrak, anonymous for $3,600. Baruch Safnes, $1,000. Baruch Geffen, $3,600 shekels, which is $1,000. Zalman Jaffe, $2,000 shekels. Nochem Katz, $2,000. You should call Nochem. You know what people should do? $2,711 for the minion of the Dapim and Chas. David Schwartz, $1,800. Moshe Zaret, $1,000. Thank you. Moshe Hamburg, a thousand. Baruch Berger, a thousand. David Feinberg, a thousand. David Ehrenreich, a thousand. Morty Tiffin Brown, a thousand. Ashi Itzkowitz, a thousand. That's you? Everybody's just trying. You're not, you're not obligated for anything. That's unbelievable. Call a Kavod Ashi. Lawrence Spiegelman, 3,600 bucks. Yishkoyach. David Steinart. I got you, 3,600 bucks. Yaakov Schoenberg. What, what does Dylan think of Rabbi Yaakov Schoenberg took upon himself? $5,000. Very choshe, very choshe. Chaim Jotkowitz and Mayor Winter, $10,000. Elvis Skensberg, Elia. The Karish Moibi Yisrael, Elia, $5,000. Yossi Sounders, $10,000. Avi Kamiansky, 10,000. Yeshua Berman, 5,000. Hillel Abrams, 3,600. Barry Siegel, 1,200. Mendy Auerbach and Yedidya Kramer, in honor of Rebelli, $10,000. Yosef Biliak, to be determined. <laughs> the <coughs> in New York, I don't have the numbers yet. In New York, one guy got up there and took upon himself $26,000. So three other people took $10,000 and the rest, I, I don't know the whole, I know you saw Goldstein, Ziegler, uh, I forgot already who the, the names will be tomorrow. Tzvi Corlin, $1,800, Miyam and Kar, from a Terrace Golda. He gave us his haul last time when I gave the share, 1,500 people, 3,600 bucks. Jimmy Freed, they also raised, so Lamai, so we have a competition now between Borough Park. It's not, it's not a fair competition because the share over there, 1,500 people showed up. To the uh, kickoff event, 30, 40 maybe. And they also pledged, I think, $85,000. So we could beat them. Dani Kilati, Shkoyach, $2,600. And he's here three days in a row already. <laughs> Talking about three days in a row, where's our architect? What you do? 
I don't want to embarrass him like that. Shlomo Lazar in eighteen hundred, Alzelia Shir eighteen hundred, David Zipora, Avia Arnold, and Micah Gross, David Carno. Oh, here he is. It was just I was just asking you about you. Here you are. Uh, David Carno, a thousand. Now this guy Akiva Boz, he's making all these phone calls. He got Lior El Gavi, Elliot Freeman, Mayor and Price, Gary Esterson, Stuart Harrow. Gabriel Golmov, Eli Galfer, Bert Ram, Brookim, thousand dollars. Alan Count, a thousand. Emmanuel Babakov, twenty six hundred. So, our boy Sai, I think we could step it up. We could do better. Don't be, don't be weary. All it is, they give you your own website page, and on it says your goal. Let's say you have a goal of thousand dollars. Take that goal, and you send it out there. You go for it. You do what Rib Nachman Selsa does. Picks up the phone and makes some phone calls. Bamis. And then he got beat out by my son on one of them. <laughs> All right. My son, I didn't ask him to. He, he, he called me yesterday. The, the funny, I didn't want to say anything. He leaves me a message. He says, I went, I met this guy in real estate and... Uh, I said, I told him about you and this. And he says, well, Reb Nachman Seltzer called you already. He says, but don't worry, I'll give it to you, not him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you all the credit, Reb Nachman. You get the credit. All right, Reb Oisai, the Koilo is sponsored. The Masechta. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Um, sorry. Uh-oh. Okay. No, no. You Okay. Yeah, yeah, just... Okay, I spoke here last night uh, just very briefly about the concept of Hakara Satov. Not everybody was here last night, but I just want to repeat what I said. I apologize, Yelly. Sorry. I know you want to get the share going and people are waiting online. <laughs> right, yeah. right. But the bottom line is, is that everybody has participated in this year. People have been coming here for the last few years. The people in the base measures take advantage of the base measures on a regular basis. Drink the coffee, use the electricity, everything that's involved in using the base medrash. I tell people there's 21 tefillos during the week, and we always consider ourselves members of the one place we daven on Shabbos. But here, the people that come here every single day, the people online that are listening every day, the people on Zoom that are listening every day, the people that are trying to skip the emails, or the people that only watch the emails, the bottom line is, is everybody has a karasato for what Rebelli has done and what he continues to do for this year. And we could talk about all the details. We don't have time to go into all the pre pratim of what is involved in making this happen every single day, but everybody should do it. And a few people came over and told me, just like Ellie is trying to allude to, that people feel they can't do it. But just to give you, we're about to start Elam Etzius right now, and there's going to be a machlokus of Yush, Shalom Yidas, have a Yush, or have a Yush. And I'll be a spoiler alert, that Yush, Shalom Yidas, we paskin, lo have a Yush. So if, you, if you're worried you're not going to be able to do it, don't give up. It's very easy to do. Push it forward. And if you don't think you can do it, you can do it. Make the time, make the effort. Uh, Tomer is passing around pages. Take upon yourselves to raise a little bit of money. It's not that big of a deal. And it shows your Akara Satov to what Reb Eli has done and what he continues to do for the Shir and for Klai Yisrael. Yeah, wow. You should let me dance. Beautiful. All right. Bemis. We're going, the money goes directly to bring people to Tyre. That's what, we are the largest organization in the world that's Makarif Kroivim and teaches Tyre, period. 25,000 people, we reach out every single day, we touch 25,000 people and it takes an army of people to get it done and it costs money, it's not as much money as a simple Moisad, it's not that much. And Bezer Hashem, next year will be bigger and better. And with that, the Mesechta, sponsored by Anonymous, for the safe and speedy return of all the hostages. There's a video I saw yesterday of the Roshiva of Panovich. He went to Kei Rachel to daven for the hostages and he broke down a mill crying. A Haredi man, crying like a baby. Lili Nishmas Chayyeb and Moshe. Lili Nishmas Chayyeb as Yosef. The parents of Chodesh. Aaron Freeman, it should be a schuz to rebellion for continuity of the Shema and teaching Torah to Kla Yisrael. Parents of Chodesh, Rufu Shleim Eli Melech Ben Zipayra. Parents Hayoyim, Sitrum Films LLC, starting Elam Etzias, the most popular parak in Shas. He's right. Good line. I like that. It's the most popular parak in Shas. Thank you. 
thanks for trying to raise a thousand dollars, and thanks for making the film about the daf with Reb Nisim Black. The second day, second paranus, Abba Rennert. Mazel tov to my son Benny for finishing Megillah for the second time with the rebellion for his Bar Mitzvah Mazel Tov. Paranus Hayyam, Giddy Strauss in honor of Yoni Pargal, my brother Morty and Munsi FD Daf Perik Aleph. The Art of the Mother sponsored by Anonymous was Chus for Easy Childbirth, his daughter and a healthy baby. MDY headquarter Coffee Corner Beverage Week, Mendel Learner, in honor of my daughters, Chasana, Shetisku Livnois Bais Nambi Yisrael. We are going to be beginning Perek Elimitsius in literally two minutes. We have to finish off this little piece over here. It's going to take literally two minutes. Daf Chafal. We are 20 Daf into Mesechtes Shbab Metzia. So yesterday we had Rabbi Yirmiya who says that if a person finds a symphon is a receipt that says that he paid off a certain loan, that the certain loan was paid off, he is the malva, he is owed money, but he found something that says it was paid off. Usually that receipt belongs in the borrower's hand. Why is it in the lender's hand? Rabbi Yirmiya says it's a joke. Literally, he says the word joke, it's a tzchoik. We don't, we don't pay any attention to it. So the Gemara says two lines from the from Aleph, Omid Aleph on top. Tashma, simfoin sheyeshal of edim kosher. Why do you say it's a joke? If a, a receipt has two edim on it, you could use it and say that the loan was paid off. It's not a joke. My edim, no, it's not the edim in the shtar. It's edei kiyom, these are the dayanim who say that this is a good receipt. Based on those two people, the dayanim, the judges... Then, yeah, you're right. It's paid off. We're talking about an individual who finds a receipt in his drawer. It's nothing. I'll prove it to you. Seifa. Because it says, If this document doesn't have Edom, it's possible. What does it mean it doesn't have Edom? You didn't have Edom sign it at all. If it's a document without Edom, then it's not a document. It's talking about that it has the Edom, everything is good. But it doesn't have the two judges to say that it's a good document. So we're talking about the judges. Don't bring me a right from the actual document. It's not a Kashmir or a Birmia who says that the actual document is a joke. Gufa. Simpan Sheshel of Edom, Iskaya Bechaismav. It says, Mufurish, that the receipt has Edom and you should use it with those Edom. Ain't all of Edom. V'yoyzim v'tach has Yidei Shalish. Let's say this document doesn't have the proper item. So it's a terrible document. But it's not in the lawyer's hand. It's not in the mouth's hand. It's not in the lender. It's not in the bar. It's in a third party. They're holding on to it. Or after the signatures of the Edim, there is a receipt that says it was paid off. Kosher, we use that as a receipt. Says the Gemara, Yosef Adachas Yidei Shalish. Why is it okay? The Ha Hemne Malvela Shalish. The reason why we say that a document, a receipt that comes from a third party is a good document is because the Malva agreed to keep it by him. Everybody agreed to keep it by him. Yosef Adachas Chitim Shtar Nami. So when you have a Shtar, you have a document that after the signatures of the Edim, it says paid. There's a stamp, paid. Why is that a good? Review me said it's a joke. Why is this good? The love the preloy have morally the story. For not for the fact that it was actually paid, the malva wouldn't go through the trouble, or it doesn't make any sense. Not trouble. Why would he put a stamp on it that says paid when in fact it's not paid? He wouldn't ruin his own star. So what if he anticipates a payment? He wouldn't. He wouldn't do that in advance. And with that, we finish Perik Shnayim Oichzin, the first Perik in Bav Metzia. Hadron Aloch Shnayim Oichzin, Hadron Aloch Shnayim Oichzin, Hadron Aloch Shnayim Oichzin. This is a lot easier. And there's a reason why the children of Klai Yisrael start off the learning of Gemara with this Perik. The Gemara Gitin Da'af Chavtes says that even the young children, Tinoiko shall be Sravim, the Gemara calls them Yoidim, they know this parak. Rabbi Kotler explains that the first thing we want to teach children is to be careful with others, other people's money. 
Don't treat it as hefker. Don't. Kids not supposed to be touching things that are not his, using things that are not his. But more importantly, to teach a child that Torah is logical, you can understand it, there's, there's good logic behind the svaras, simple svaras, as we're going to see over here. So, a question, start off the paragraph with a question. It just happened, literally like a, in the last few days, a week or two ago, Here's the picture. Scuba divers found this R- Rolex watch. It was a 1971 w- Rolex. And it turns out it's in working condition. It was in the ocean for years. Exactly how long, the Machloikis. It said on it, it was etched on the back. It said presented 71, something like that. There was some sort of simon muvak, let's call it. A real true simon identifying characteristic or whatever you want to call it. What's the halacha? You find this watch, you have to give it back. Let's say it says the guy's name and address on it, in the back. Give it back, you don't give it back. What are you, what do you know, the Masech by heart? You're out, next. You have to give it back or not? Is that a yes or a no? I didn't understand what that was. You have to give it back. Down the ocean? So, so the guy gave it back. The reason why he gave it back is because he's an Amaretz, like some of you guys. He didn't learn Elam Metzius. Who did he give it back? From the ocean. The guy was a Miyayish. So what if it has his name on it? Let's see the, the Mishnah. These are the fines that you could keep. And these are fines that you can't keep. You have to go and announce them. Elu Here's a list of different things that you could keep. Matzah peirois mufuzarim. You found fruit, as the Gemara is going to say, it's talking about wheat. Something as small as this. This is wheat, this is fruit. This is sheet that this is what other Mauritian ate, not, not so much an apple. You take the actual wheat, like this, and you... Feed it down and you get kernels. These are the kernels. Matzah, huh? But the, 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 the time out, Mati. You sure this is the comment you want to make? Because there's one per share. So think about it nice and hard. Okay, no, what are you saying? Let's hear. MREs, oh, those parachutes. It's a beautiful, beautiful thought, Mati, and that's it. That's it for the share. <laughs> A person finds fruit spread out everywhere. Now, Rabbi Yisai, there's a concept that every Barbie Rav knows. It's called Yish. Yish means a person abandons his hope. He gives up. And he says to himself, says Rashi, the famous Lashen, Wow, I can't believe I lost it. Once he says that in his head, or in Metzius, it's done. So in certain situations, like when you, you see this uh, wheat, or whatever it is, we're going to see in the Gemara, you see things scattered, so the guy gave up hope on finding it. Even if he, even if he comes back, they stepped on it, it's gone, it's, it's over. Mois Mufuzarois goes something like this. Check this out, Rabbi Isa. video showing cash all over the highway and Dunwoody last night. And oh, looky, looky here. People just happen to pull over <laughs> to take a look at this cash and put some in their cars. A little open near Ashford, Dunwoody. Okay. Givaldic. So, you find cash all over the place. Miyayish. It's not a good idea to pick it up, Rabbi Isai. At the end of one of these uh, things that I saw, um, the, the, the cops came and arrested a bunch of people. Krichos b'shus rabim. This is krichos. This is literally krichos. This is a bundle, like a handheld bundle of wheat. Krichos. Shkoyach Tomer. Call him up while he's putting the thing together. I need one of these. You got it. Shkoyach. V'igulei dveila. Igulei dveila looks something like this. Basically, they would take the figs and press them into a big circle. We'll see more pictures of it later. This is something they found, I think it's like 1,500 years old. They literally, they found this contained in an earthenware piece 
in good shape. They're in a circle, the whole thing. So the point is that everybody does it the same way. They all press it the same way. You find one of these, you have no, there's no, there's no, there's no simen on it. Kikori shanachtoim, breads from a bakery, they're all the same exact shape, the zero simen. Machroizoi shall dog him if they are. Let me just show you what Yoshi did here just for a second. This is, a, this is stuff that you could keep. Why? Because people give up on this. Here you have the wheat over there. Over here you have the gulit vela. You have bread. You have fish. Fish that are strung through with the string. Small fish. They all look the same. They sell in the marketplace the same way. Pieces of meat. Ugh, I had, I had a, a platter of meat in the fridge. Too late now. Okay. Yesterday. Sushi, meat, wine. Givaldi. Bechatiko shel basar. If you have pieces of wool, that this is how it comes right off the animal. This is the first step. Wool is wool. It always looks the same. Bundles of this flax. This is flax. It says on it even. So it's all the same. It looks the same. There's no similar. This is not the pro- proper color, but I think it gives a good idea of what it looks like. There's a tongue of wool. This is wool. It's not purple. This one is blue. This is more like tchelas. It could be like a little bit more purpley than this. That's the, the right color. But it's a tongue of... It's all, it always looks the same. Here, you see? It, it resembles a tongue. Okay. If you find any of these, you can keep it. If there's something unusual, something different in it, you have a bread from a bakery, but it's different, then you must announce it. You cannot keep it. We are, we're talking about this, that round thing of, that's the this you cannot keep. Since it has a piece of earthenware in it, it's different than anything else. Or, kikar, there was a bread, and inside there was money, that you should not keep, that's already a simon. So when you put it in there, it's different. So you're going to say a newer vessel, something brand new. We'll see the Gemara. Says the Gemara, you found fruit that's scattered, you get to keep it. As the Gemara of a comma. It, there's an unknown here. How many fruit in what area? There's two components. Do you find one Watermelon sitting in a one foot by one foot? Or do you find a thousand grapes scattered over 500 feet? What, the mission doesn't tell us. Omer kav ba'arba amos. It's one kav in four amos. So something around this. This is about a kav, let's say. One half liters of something. This is a kav. Now, let's do this for a second. I know this is a little annoying, but I want to give the oilam understanding of what Arba Amos is. This, according to one, the, the most makele here, Reb Nachman, you hold this for a second. This is four. Four by four, okay? That's the, that's the, that's the thing. So let's put it down over here for a second. Let's yeah, put it down over here. So that's four by four, Amos. 190 centimeters or whatever it is in inches. For this, we have a little bit of a, a 3D animation for the for the oilam for the kids that watch this. It's MDY, of course. Derech nefila means the guy had no idea that it fell, and here's why. A bunch of kernels, dalad al dalad. So if it's in that area, you get to keep it. Why? Because they're spread out and it's hard to gather and clean it up. So people give up. They're miyayish. They say, okay, I give up on it. Somebody else could have it. If somebody gives up on it, what happens? It becomes hefker. And you could take it from the hefker. Says Gemara Yechidami. If it fell out of the back of the truck, I feel it than even more than one of these bags. It's hefker. 
Vider Chinuach, if you notice that a person put it in a very nice pile, three over here, three over here, he made a whole design out of it. Afilu He put like, you know, like they sell the apples in the store in America. Like 10 on the bottom, five on top of that, three, one on the top. It's a beautiful pile. Why? It didn't happen by itself. So the guy didn't give up on it. So even less than a kav, you also have to give it back. Afilu You shouldn't be able to keep it. Look at this beautiful picture. We're talking about where they take the wheat in this form, they put it on the ground, and they take an animal, and the animal steps all over it until it extracts the, the kernel from within the wheat. So we're not talking about that a guy lost something. The guy actually, let's say, even owns. It's like his factory, or it's the place where people do this. When he was done, he looked around and he said, I'm not bending down to pick up one bag worth of this. I already have 500 pounds of this stuff. I've been here all day. This is spread out over four amas. I'm done. And he walks away. So he gave up knowingly. It wasn't that it fell off the back of his truck. He was at the machnash of the Bidari. So the Gemara explains. Kav ba'ar ba'amois nafesh chayu. If it's one kav and four amas, four by four. Yeah, the famous joke for the kids. Guy had a four by four Jeep. It says four by four. He wakes up in the morning and the guy wrote equals 16. Because it says four times four, so there's 16. So he goes and he paints it up. The next day, nachamal, four by four, 16. So he said that he had enough. So after the, the third time, he decided he put equals, he himself did it nicely, equals 16. He painted it on professionally, 16. So next morning, he wakes up and a guy scratched in with a, with a razor. Good job. Like, check. Shkoya. This is, no, this is only for the fifth graders that are watching. Since there's a, it's a large area, it's a lot of work to collect. So a person is not going to be material himself. But he's not going to go back and take it. Afkure, he says the Gemara, Mafkilu becomes Afkur. But to Mahachi Torah, less than this, less than the four Amas, it's not a large area. So if he has a Kav in, let's say, two Amas, it's not that much. He bends down once and he picks it all up. But he'll gather it. It's not Afkur. Boy, Rabbi Yirmiya, ask Rabbi Yirmiya. If this is our area, it's four amas and a kav spread out in the four amas. What if we half the amount and half the area? So if you notice in Shas, Revere Mio loves these kind of questions. He's known for these kind of questions and their takeaways. They're like questions in the Metzias. You take this Metzias and you do it like this. As soon as he asks, you know right away it's going to be a takeo. Boy, Rabbi Yirmiya, chatsi kav amismao. So we could... Split this down the middle kind of thing here. Let's fold this in half. Here, you got grab that over there. Okay. So you have half the area, but you also have half a bag. What's the halach? So what's the Gemara's question? I say that's dafka kav and dafka four amas time of mine. There's a lot of work. But half the amount, but half the area also. Given the nafish derchayu, it's not very hard. As we said before, it's not hard to, to work that. Loi mafkirlu. You hear this? The Gemara has a, a tzad to say that since it's half the area, there is no hefker because it's half the work. It's not that hard. Ask Tosif is a bomb question. If we stop right over here, stop right over here. We have a tzad to say that half the area, a person doesn't mind cleaning it up. Wait a minute. In four amas, you told me that it's hefker. But every four amas has two amas in it. And two amas, he doesn't mind cleaning up. So then it's not hefker. Two amas, he doesn't make hefker. Why? Because it's not a problem to clean up. So when he has four amas, he shouldn't give up the four amas because two out of those four amas, it's easy for him to clean up. So he cleans it up. He's going to take it home. How could I even have a Havamina that two Amas is not Hefker? Every four Amas has two Amas. 
Uh, within four, you have two. And two, you're saying, oh, maybe two is not after. So four is also not after because four, half of four is two. Pretend that there's only two. Says Tyson, it's an unbelievable psychological thing. Imagine you have a desk that has crazy piles of paper on it. You look at it and you say, mm -mm, not today. I'm not cleaning this. Clean half of it. No, I'm not cleaning half of it. I'm not cleaning any of it. If you have a small desk with a bunch of... Okay, it's two minutes. I'll take care of it right away. You're not even going to start cleaning a large job. Says Tyson, if you have four Amas, you're right. Half of that is two. Every desk, half of the terrible pile on the desk is a small desk. No. When you look at it, you get discouraged. You walk away from it. Like the daf. Like the daf. A guy in Shul, you know him. A guy in Shul came over to me and said, I love your daf, I'm going to start it, I'm starting. But after my son's chasana. Right now, the next few weeks, I'm very, very busy. That's called discouragement. That's yush. Not looking at the... Take whatever you can get. Within four hours, you have two hours that are easy to clean. No, no, no. I don't do that. I only clean the whole thing or nothing. Like fundraising, Valdic. From now on, like fundraising, whatever it is, like fundraising. I love it. I'm expecting that TBD to be determined, Yosef Biliak. I'm expecting it to be in the thirty, forty thousand dollar range minimum. <laughs> like fundraising, like you're the one that said it. Like fundraising. If there's anybody that can do it, it's you. I can send out only my <laughs> on the screen in big words <laughs> oh, so what's the other side no the opposite this is, if this is not valuable then half of this is not valuable so of course he's not going to go back for that it's, it's half here. if so what about let's double it what if you have two of these bags Four Amis on eight Amis. So it's double the area, not eight by eight. Four by eight, so it's double the area, but I have double the bags. Now, maybe now I have a value here. Maybe it's Kedai for me to get on my hands and knees and start picking up these little grains. By the way, here in Eretz Yisrael, I don't know about America, great idea. They, there's, a, there's a policy that if you make a wedding and there's confetti at the wedding, you pay extra 500 shekel to clean up the confetti. It just happened to Rebel Yakim, who spoke beautifully last night. He did a bunch of these events and he explained how it works, how easy it is, and this and that, different approaches, how to do it. Just his father just made a chasen less than two weeks ago. His father was fined 500 shekel. So I, I was saying, I told him when he said this, I used to be a caterer. And I'll tell you, Abem is a tip, a life tip. I thought it took me a lot of practice to learn this. People used to ask me for the most bizarre things at a wedding, okay? So I learned the system. It was a beautiful system. Yeah. Matt, how do you remember? A girl came in there. A Kala came in and she says, listen, I always had a dream. I want to walk into the, I want to come into the hall on a beautiful giant white horse. Is that possible? I said, 100%. I wrote it down. White horse. She says, listen, but another thing. When I come in, I want to release 100 beautiful butterflies into the hall as I come in. I said, 100 butterflies. <laughs> Knew anything else? No, that's it. Okay. $9,726. What, what? I said, yeah, the horse. I'm going to have to clean up after it. The butterflies. 100, imagine 100 butterflies stuck on top of my ceiling. One is there. I'm going to have to take a, a crane, come around. Nice. You want it? No, you don't want it. Okay, great. No, let's go buy it. Another cow. My husband is really tall. Story, true story. My husband is really tall. When he's going to go like this, he's going to come into the. Uh, his hands are going to hit the chandelier. So I need you to take down the chandeliers. I said, 100%, no problem. Yeah, that, the trick is yes, not no, yes. Yes, okay, Chandel how many chandeliers? Three, three chandeliers, okay. That's $3,000, union electricians, this, that, $3,000. Oh, you don't want it? Oh, I'm sorry, okay, I don't know. Okay, okay. Let's, uh, should I take it off? Okay, I'll take it off. Okay, anyways, mamish works like a bomb. You always say yes, it just, it just happens to cost a little money. Fine. Confetti, no problem, 500 shekel. So imagine picking this confetti up, picking this up with the floor. It's not your volume. I don't know how they did it back in the day. Today we have vacuums, whatever. A broom? No, just dirt. We're gonna broom up the whole, the whole street. Says the Gemara. So we, we're holding. I have no idea what we're holding. We have eight amas. Oh, so kabar ba'vistam ba'vishim the nafish the chayiv a kolchin kabayim b'shemoyna amos 
Now there's double the amount of work, so certainly is in Mafkirit, given the vision to Chayu. Tvei, it's much more work. Mafkirit, it becomes Hefkirit. Dilma, Mishum, Dilei Chashivi. The whole point is that one of these bags is not important enough. Vikabayim, but two of these bags, Bishmoy Naam, is this a pace for him. Kivin the Chashivi, Lema Hefkirit. Kav Shum Shimim Bar Ba'am Oismau. I had Rachmanus on Rav Nachman, that's why I didn't, I was going to spill this. I was going to like Mamish. But I'm not going to do it. I have two funakim sitting across, across from each other. This is sesame. <laughs> by mis- I was going to by mistake it. Trust me, it wasn't going to be on purpose. It was going to be oh, yeah. all over certain people. They're going to be picking sumsum out of their shirts for the rest of this year. But not today. This is very expensive stuff. So maybe they go and they uh, pick this up. Um, it's not... It's not doesn't cost much. So so the sesame. They're not mafkir because it's chashiv. It's a lot of work. But kolchke and shumshum and certainly sesame is impossible to pick up with a broom without a broom. Given the novish dechayu tfei mafkiluhu. What about kav tamre? Oh no, not this. My favorite. I learned to love these. These are moyerdik. Put this in your shake. It's unbelievable. I used to. On, on Rosh Hashanah night, I would eat it, close my nose, and you know, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta eat it. The Yeros, and now I learned that it's one of the best stuff. So here, <laughs> let's say there's a kav. You have this spread out. Now the thing about this, it's not hard to pick up. It's very easy to pick up. Kav tamri barabamis, kav rimoyne barabamis. You're not gonna get pomegranates now in these days because you know Rosh Hashanah is a long time. But I, I saved that. I knew that we're having the shear. So. Let's say four of these. It's a kav in four amas. Now, not worth that much, says the Gemara, I guess in those days. Kav remoyne barabam, especially we have it over here in our park, mm-hmm. just growing. Kav remoyne barabam is nami. Kiv loy chashivi mafkilu, maybe it's hefkir. Oy dilma mishum denefishit rechayu. It's hard to bend down over four amas. Kav tamri barabam is kav remoyne barabam is kiv loy nefishit rechayu. Oh, the whole, sorry. The whole point is that it's hard to pick stuff up like this, this stuff and sesame, whatever. But these are easy. You don't even have to bend down. Most people just lift it up and take go. It's not hard. My, what's the halacha? Take go. A boy say, Rav Steiman, a guy, uh, not a hundred percenter, comes to him and says, Rebbe, I'm Elio Novi. He says, Oh, I've been waiting for you for you since the fourth grade. What's the halacha in Half a kav and two amas. Huh? He went, if he, he ran back to the basement Shugayim. So I know the, the Hemshech of the story based on the story that I said uh, the other day. The story was that the guy came to America to collect money and he told the guy, I'm going to this Gvir. And he told him, oh, you're going to him? He asked the Shaila, uh, he, asked, he asked the question about Metziah, go look it up. So based on that, I have the inside story what happened. So this, this Nebuch guy goes back to the base Meshugayim and he tells the next Meshugana, who also thinks he's a Lianov, he says, I just went to Rav Shteyman, and Rav Shteyman told me, he asked me, if you're a Lianov, what's the halacha? He says, don't worry about it, I'm going to Rav Shteyman. And the whole time he goes, he's going to Rav Shteyman and he's practicing to himself. Rabbi Nishalayim told me that chayiv lahachriz, you have to be machriz on a half a, Half a cab. So he goes, Chayv lahachers, Chayv lahachers. He gets to Rav Shteyman. Tells Rav Shteyman, Rebbe, I'm Elio Novi. So Rav Shteyman looks at him and says, You're Elio Novi. So there's somebody that's in Cherem. Does he have to wear tefillin? He says, Chayv lahachers, Chayv lahachers. But that's the end of the story. You heard it here first. Zog the Gemara. Itmar. Yehu Shaloi Midas. Daf Chof Aleph Amit Beis. Yush Shaloi Midas was sponsored by Kinovations in honor of my uncle Rebel Khanan Pressman as a school of Simcha, Ben Fago, and Nair Tumid of Baltimore, Maryland, in honor of Fishel and Simcha Gross. Thanks to them, 137 people learned, over 16,000 Davin, 727,000 minutes of Torah. Yush Shaloi Midas. Yush means a person gives up without even knowing that he has to give up. In other words, a person lost money, he doesn't know that he lost some money. Do we say that had he known, he would have given up? Right now, he doesn't know. But typically speaking, he gives up. But he doesn't know about it. 
the Rebbe's always say, the Yish is Shalom Das. When a person gives up, it's because he wasn't thinking, he didn't have the, ra- the right mindset. Brings to mind, brings to mind Reb Sikhus Shalevsky, Reb 87 years old, and he's still 88 when he had the baby, but 87 when he went for brachas to Rabbanim, there's videos of him saying, going to the, to the Rabbanim, say, I need a baby. Can you give me a bracha for Ben, ben Zacher? Ben Zacher, he's 87 years old. Ben Zacher. It's a story of a person that never gave up hope. Never gave up hope. And I got to tell you, what does this have to do with the campaign? Yosef, what does this have to do with the campaign? So I made, I don't call people up for money, right? It's not, I've never done it. But you got to go out of your comfort zone. Doylem said, we're making a campaign, we're making a campaign. So I made a phone call. I figured like this, let me do the easiest one. I'm going to go to my partner, not Bensi Freeman, a different partner in a, in a, in a deal, a from guy. This is going to be easy. We're a business, we're in together. I'm going to ask him for some money, and he's going to give me money, no problem. Everything is great. I call him up, and because I have no experience, I asked him for too much. And he took offense. And he basically said, absolutely nothing. I'm not giving you a dime. I'm like, what? I thought we're, part- I thought we're friends. Like, we're good. Mm-hmm. Nothing. I'm, I'm not making this up. And basically, the conversation was over. He, nothing. And I was dejected. I mamish, I felt, yush, yush. For two days, I didn't make any calls. Yesterday, right before I came here to the, to the meeting, I made a call. And the guy, without, no, $5,000. You want $5,000? $5, I didn't even say how much I wanted. I wanted twenty from him. But okay, he said five is five. Don't have yush, Rabbi Say. Don't have yush. And if you make those phone calls and people deject you, they, they'll come around. You make your, your money other ways. Go, that guy, by the way, the first guy, he sent a message through uh, my partner that he's going to give us uh, $1,800. Fine, give Aldi. But at the end of the day, don't be miyash. You should let me ask. Abai Omar. Abai Omar lo yahavi yush, virova Omar havi yush. If a person doesn't know that he lost something, says Abai, he didn't know. How could, how could a person abandon something he doesn't even know about? You have to know about it. The says, not true. Once you find out that you lost it, so retroactively, you were miyayish from it. Says the Gemara of Rav Amish. But Dov HaShem Sheyesh Boi Simen, something that has an identifying mark, Kuli Ham Eloi Pligid Deloi Havi Yush. It says his name on it. It has a big mark over it, a big tear like we learned in about a get. That's not Yush. Vav Gav Deva Shamin and the miyayish, and even though he hears, later on we heard that there's Yush, where's my, I don't know what happened there. Okay. Oh, here it is. Hold on. I've not yet yeah, from this thing. Shlomi Klein got it for me. It works beautifully. It's not used. Because when the finder found it, the guy didn't give up hope on it yet. So when you took it, you stole it. It's not yours. You shouldn't have taken it. Because when he finds out, that it was lost. He doesn't give up. Why? Meimar Omer, he says to himself, Simonisly Begavei, it says my name, somebody's going to return it, whatever the simon is. You have the simon, I'm going to give the simon and I'm going to take it. Question for the Oilam. We had this in Baba Kama, but just to refresh our memories, somebody that finds something and three months later, the owner gives up hope. Why doesn't the guy that finds it, how come he doesn't get to keep it? There was Yish. It's in his possession. Time, so yeah. what? But right now, it's... Right now, yes, so so Toysus says better. Toysus says because he turns into a Shoimer. When you find it, you become a Shoimer. You're, you're, you're appointed to watch it. You can never, it can never be yours. That's one shot in Toysus. Okay. Or the Chiyov, to, to give it back, never went away. Oh, here we are. Here we are. It's, it's unbelievable that people in Eretz have never seen this. Check out this video. This is called the Tide. People from Chutzlar see this all the time. This happens daily because of the magnetic forces in the, in the, in, on Earth, whatever it is. The gravitational forces. Thank you. The water just goes. A guy put his Rolex over there. And now it's gone. It's finished. Shalom. So he's miyayish. He abandons hope. That's zuta shliyama tide. What's shlilusa shilnar? This is shlilusa shilnar. This is when the river goes over a bank. 
I saw this with my own eyes when I was in Venice as a bacher. There was a, an alarm, a literal alarm. Like here, the, the siren goes off when the, the missiles come in. Over there, the guy, I was in an Israeli guy's house. He said, get up and leave town right now because you're not equipped for this. We went out and people were wearing boots literally up to their belt. That's how people were walking. And then I noticed all the stores, the shelves only start this high because the water sometimes just goes up onto the sidewalks, literally a foot or two. And then the, the city starts building these bridges real quickly. I have pictures of it. Crazy. Literally, literally like this. It's just the water just comes up. Now imagine if you have a Rolex watch sitting there on a little, on a, whatever, on the sidewalk. It comes and just takes you right back into the ocean. You give up hope. That's why the Rolex watch, if you know the halacha, you don't give it back. You don't have to give it back. Even if it says the guy's name on it. Even if it has a sim in Rachman Shari, the Torah says, take it. Like we're going to explain soon. Keep leaky. So where's Machlagis Rav and Abaya if Yush Levin Das? Again, not knowing that it got lost, is that considered Yush? Keep leaky. Bidova Shein Boy Simon. It's something that doesn't have an identifying mark. Abaya Omar Loi Havi Yush, the Holoyada, the Nofal Mene. How could somebody give up hope on something it doesn't even know happened? Rav Omar Havi Yush, it does work. The Lichyada, the Nofal Mene, me Yaish. Because when he does find out that it fell from him, that's when he gives up. May Ma Omar Simon, the Lester Begave, I don't have a Simon. Mehashta. From the moment that it fell, Rabbi Yisrael, Mehashra, from retroactive, who the Miyayish, it becomes Yish. Simen, Pamgash, Mamkajati, Kachzaz. Go figure that out. There's a bunch of, these are Rosh Hashanah for all the things that are coming up now. Tashma, Peres, Mufuzar. What about our Mishnah that says that if you found wheat scattered, you're allowed to take it. Haliyodad, enough on me, isn't this a right? Bayo. I'm sorry to Rav, but that says it's you. She allowed to take it. Why? But the guy didn't know about it. The guy that's driving that pickup truck and the weed falls off the back. He didn't know it fell off the back. As we said before, it's talking about where they threshed the... He gave it up on purpose. It didn't fall off the back of the truck like you thought. That's a lost object with the knowledge that it got lost. Toshma, Mois Mufuzaris, he found dollar bills in the middle of the street. Hare Elishloi could keep it. Amai, Halo Yoda, the Nafamine, the guy that lost it doesn't know. So now I'm making the Rabbi Yitzchak. We're going to see later on the Rabbi Yitzchak says, and we're going to use it three times here. The famous Rabbi Yitzchak, Domar, Odom, Osilim, Mashmish, Bikisoi, Bechol, Shah, Visha. It's natural for a human being to check where his money is. And therefore, he's constantly checking, and he sees it's gone that moment. He's Miyaj. Hachanami in our sugi too, or the Muslim Mashma from Kisim Chosha. Visha. Toshma. Igulit Vela Vikikor Shanachtim. Again in our Mishnah, it says you find figs like they're typically sold. Here we even have a picture from Morty Tiffenbrown. Where is it? Here. He sent me this picture. There's a circle of, 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 of figs. Find something like that. There's millions of them. Vicky Gar should not only find the loaf of bread. He doesn't know that it fell. Since it's heavy, made the Yodabu. You you know right away that it fell. This reminds me of the story. I don't like the story, but since it fits in here so beautifully, I'll say it over. Anyways, they don't say it about me and you. If the story happened or not, it's a, a perfect story to be made up in Bnei Brak. They say a guy went over to Rav Shach and says, Rebbe, why is your hand stuck to you, to you like this? He goes, Oh boy. I must have dropped that watermelon I was carrying a few... Basically, he was thinking and learning. And he's carrying a watermelon. <coughs> and it fell. Now, the point is that when something's heavy, a person usually realizes that it fell. Not in this case. So, Toshma Ulushoni Shalargamon, you find one of these guys, Haril Shaloi. According to Rav, it's great. You, Shaloi Midas, have you, you get to keep it. But according to Abai, you need to know. He didn't know that it fell. It's very expensive. A person is famous grud that says, because it's almost Purim, in Megillah Davdala, it talks about if you are Yoytza, the suit of Purim at night. And the Gemara says, you're not Yoytza. So the Gemara says over there that the person that heard this halacha, he repeated it to himself 40 times, that it should be like, Kimunach Bikisoy, like in a pocket, the Gemara says. Says the Vilnagayin, because since you're also the mashmish b'chol shah v'shah, you, you, so the Gemara uses the lashon of kiss and not kufsa. Sometimes the Gemara uses the lashon kimunach b'kufsa. This is kimunach b'kisa, because you're mashmish. 
says the Gemara, if a person finds money in a shul, this is this over here. You insert the story of the guy in Letterman that found the money and he and he put up a sign. You get to keep it. Why? Because it's in a shul. There's so many people there. You're not going to get it back. It doesn't know. So let me ask you a question. We just had, if you go back, I don't know how many lines, let's say um, 12 lines up. It says, Tashma, Mois Mufuzaris. The Gemara asked the question about money on the floor that's in our Mishnah. And we already said, oh, the Mosul, the Mashmish, Bekisa, Bechol, So then why does the Gemara ask me a question from Mois again? If you find money in the shul, what did I gain? I have a Mishnah that says, if you find money, you're allowed to keep it. So why are you bring me a price? If you find money in the shul, you're allowed to keep it. You don't ask that question, Taisvis. And Taisvis says, beautiful, I'm bringing it up because of Taisvis chat. So he says, this Bryce is even stronger. This Bryce says that if you find money with somebody's name on it, in a shul, it has an envelope. It says this and this and that. You don't give it back. Why? Because you give up on it. Even with your name, you give up on it. I'm not passing on Allah's Lamaises, I'm just saying this is what it says over in, in Taisvis. Like Elio Jacobs, who, who gave back the envelope, we have to find out if he did Shalalacha or not. So, Omer Yitzchak, or the Moses, the Mashmish, Kisa Bechol Shah. What about in our days, Rabbi Say, Like Elio Jacobs from the Koyal, he found two and a half thousand dollars in an envelope, or not in an envelope, let's say people find $100 bills all the time. Do you have to give it back or not? Now, if you're going with the Svar that a person constantly checks his pocket, I don't know, I've never seen my friends checking their pockets every two minutes. Nobody's going like this. You have a wallet, you leave it there, it's on a credit card, Ooh, nobody's checking anything. So maybe there's no such thing today. Maybe in Nishtanu Adairis. Says the Chazanish, yes, Nishtanu Adairis. However, in Halacha, in Nishtana. The Halacha remains the same, says the Chazanish. Once your Chacham made a Takana, you don't give back money. You find money, you don't, you don't, you don't put up a sign, you don't, you don't make a thing. Why? There's something called Hefker Bezen Hefker. Chacham have the right, even if you don't have this thing that the guy didn't check his pocket, didn't check his pocket, Chacham took it away from him and gave it to you. Others, others say that, listen, Chazanish might be right, but at least don't, don't be zoichen it right away. Keep it until the guy's miyayish. Hold it in your pocket. Be, say that I'm going to be zoichen it in two weeks from now. Toshma, huh? Yisrael, not Yisrael, fine. Mm. In order to not be over, be surah not be zoichen. It says in Gemara, Masa kaladu mutar meleket. Leket, as we know, is one of the three matnis kuna, matnis anim. Leket shechapeo. Here's leket, or in animation, it looks something like this. If a person drops two, two of these guys, the Ani could keep it. If it's more, not. You give it to the Ani. Now, when could you and I go and take it? When the Nemushas go there in the field, we'll see in a second. It looks something like this. Once the old men go really, really slow, they go through the field, you have no chance of finding anything there. When there's two waves of poor people that go through, after the second wave, you're not going to get anything. What about all the poor people around the world? They don't know about it. And again, that's Yush, Shalom Das. They don't know about it. If they don't know about it, they're not Miyash. And how could you take it from the other Anim in the world? Says Gemara Amri, Kivan, the Ikani, Macha. Since there's poor people here, everybody knows that in every city, unfortunately, there's poor people. Hanak Migori, Yush Miyash. The, the poor people in Australia, you know, they have no business here in Ramapa Chemish because the poor people will take care of the business here and you have nothing to look for. So everybody around the world is miyayish from all the stuff here in this city. <coughs> Excuse me. Especially today when we have WhatsApp groups for Aniyim. You have the Aniyim the, the Ani WhatsApp group. Hey, there's three pieces of wheat and so-and-so field. And the whole, the, the, that's how it's going to be, right? We're going to have WhatsApp groups. Well, we're not going to have Aniyim then. Toshma. Ketzio is baderech. So ketzio is, check this out. It's not literally like this, but I have uh, figs. So if you take this fig, this is like cool. It's, uh, the fig, these are dried figs. So what they do is they, they punch a hole right here on the top, as you can, as you can see, or it's almost like this. Yeah, they punch a hole like this, and then all the juices flow out, says Rashi, and then you can dry it. So that's why it's called cut figs. He did it literal, like cut, you know, like they're cut. So, even in a field where they dry it out, 
check this beautiful picture out, you have a fig tree and you have figs underneath it. Those, that's more like it, the color of those figs, not like this, this dried. So this goes like who? If you find these figs, you'll have to take it home. That's like Rava that says, you shalim and das. The owner doesn't know that it fell off the tree. You shalim and das, you'll have to take it. Then it continues, Bezeisim, but in olives, ubecharuvim, and in caribs, buxer, also you're not allowed to take it back. Who is that like? Like? Very good. Like a bayah. That you can't take, you should have, Bishlam Eresha, the figs, La Baya Le Kashia, he'll explain, I've given the Cheshivim, Mashim Shmu, he's Miyayish, why? Because he's constantly looking to see if he has the figs over there or not, so he gives up. Teina, the tree, Nami, made the idea of the not true. Everybody knows that eventually it's going to fall off the tree. I give up hope now, anything that falls. I'll save the Rova Kashia, but what has Rova explained, the Tony Bezayim, the Rova Moser, but Rova holds the Yushalim Das, is Yush, how come not by olives? Omar Reba Vosh, and Isaiah is, olive is different. Hoiva Chazusim, Chiyachalav. Each olive looks different than the other. I could look at this olive and say, this comes from that guy's olive tree. This guy comes from, here, check this picture out. The, the, the way it looks, its face is different. <laughs> Even though they fall off the tree, made the idea, the inishu. Everybody knows each person has a place, each, each olive has a place. So then also when it comes to figs, I can tell this fig has a certain color, coloration to it. It's from this guy's tree. Says Once a fig falls to the ground, it's disgusting. Who knows what kind of bugs touched it or ate it? And therefore, he's Miyayish Rabbi Have a wonderful day.